Good evening, wherever you are joining us from. My name is Patricia Roxon Hamon coming to you live from our studios at Kwabinya Point One. This is News Board. Let's take a look at our headlines in Ghana and around the world. 17 people have been confirmed dead following a huge explosion at Bogoso Apiate in the western region. The Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, CLOCSAC, has called off its strike. <music> Government has suspended expenditure in the 2022 budget by 20%. And Mozambique has set up more teams to help in the search for six missing people after a vessel sank in the river Zambezi. You can also watch us on all our social media handles at New TV GH. And now to the details. 17 people have been confirmed dead following a huge explosion at Bogoso Apiate in the western region. This was confirmed in a statement issued by the Ministry of Information. The statement also indicated that some 59 injured persons were rescued, bringing to 76 the number of persons known to have been affected so far. The statement also noted that out of the 59 injured persons, 42 are receiving treatment and some are in critical condition. The information minister further outlined some measures taken so far by the government to handle the situation. To prevent a secondary explosion, government has deployed a joint team of police and military explosion experts to examine the situation and put in place the requisite measures. The government also indicated that early reports show that several houses and structures in sections of the town have been destroyed and plans have been put in place to ensure that stranded community members are catered for in the coming days. Government further commended the Police Service, Fire Service, National Disaster Management Organization, Ghana Health Service, National Ambulance Service, the Municipal Authority, health professionals in the vicinity, and local residents for their assistance so far. It also expressed deep condolences to the families of the deceased and sent best wishes to the injured for their speedy recovery. The country has received enough doses of COVID-19 vaccines to fully vaccinate about 17 million people as efforts are made to deliver the herd immunity target of 20 million people, according to data from the Ghana Health Service. The data show that Ghana had taken delivery of over 25 million doses of the five approved COVID-19 vaccines as of January 19th this year. The COVAS has contributed 68% Government of Ghana has purchased about 20, nearly 21% plus, and we have had some bilateral donations accounting to about 10% of the, uh, the donation. We want to use the opportunity to thank our partners for the support. We are exp expecting about 1.5 million doses um, very soon. The date is yet to be announced, and then we also allow this is in addition to the, the doses that we have had to hold up so that we can bring them in in trying not to overwhelm our cold chain facility. So far, 34.8% of the population have received at least one dose, and a little over 16% having been fully vaccinated. The 34.8% is in relation to the targeted 20 million people to be vaccinated. November, December, the minister declared a month of vaccination, and in that December month, um, had it not been the Christmas festivity that curtailed the distribution, but we were able to do about 2.9 million, nearly 3 million doses of vaccine were distributed in December, with the first three weeks of December. So far in January, as at today, we've done about 1 million and 40,000. Uh, the Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, CLOCSAG, has called off its strike. CLOCSAG called off the strike with the explanation that their National Executive Council has reviewed a memorandum of understanding with the government. 
The strike, which started on Thursday morning, left some Ghanaians seeking government services stranded across the country. A statement signed by Isaac Bampo Adu, Executive Secretary of Clocksack on Thursday, January 20th, said the National Executive Council of Civil and Local Government Staff Association, Ghana, at its meeting held on Thursday, 20th, January 2022, had reviewed the Memorandum of Understanding between the government and Clogzag. The National Executive Council of Clogzag has therefore decided to call off the strike. All members should organize themselves and resume work on Monday, January 24th. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission had earlier said in a statement on Thursday, January 20th, that the government had granted aspects of the demands by the Clogzag, which resulted in their strike action. The FWSC said, quote, yesterday government reached an agreement with the leadership of the Civil and Local Government Service Association, Ghana, which culminated in the signing of an MOU agreement granting some aspects of the demands concerning their conditions of service and others being worked in progress. And on to some business news, Ghana has taken full ownership of the 250 megawatts power production plant from the African and Middle East Resources Investment Group, otherwise known as Ameri Energy. The 10-unit barge, with capacity to generate 25 megawatts each, totaling 250 megawatts, which is commissioned on natural gas, is set to be moved to Anwomaso in Kumase in the Ashanti region. The takeover and the relocation of the plant, the Ministry of Energy said, would rake in about $31 million annually from power exports and $4 million as saving on transmission loss cutback. The power barges were handed over to the Volta River Authority, which received the plant on behalf of the government at the Boaji Power Enclave in the Shama District in the Western Region yesterday. It comes after the expiry of the five-year production and sale of power agreement signed between the government and the United Arab Emirates-based company. The Minister of Energy, Dr. Matthew poku Prempe, in a speech read on his behalf by one of his deputy ministers, Mr. William Oreku Edu, said the deployment of the power plants in the Ashanti region was strategic. He said from a barge, the power plant will be relocated to Anumasu to improve the reliability of power supply in the middle and northern section of the power grid and for export. He said preparations at the site where the plant will be sited were at an advanced stage and on schedule for completion. Government has suspended expenditure in the 2020 budget by 20%, the Finance Minister Ken Ofuriata has announced. Parliament has already approved government's total expenditure for 2022, but the government, in a prudent fiscal consolidation move, has decided to cut down on its expenditure up to a whooping 20%. Addressing the media on Wednesday, the finance minister said the expenditure management by government is expected to continue for this year and beyond in the midst of the global impact of COVID-19 on economies. So strengthen expenditure management in 2022 and beyond to ensure that we match all expenditures to revenue inflows, all expenditure commitments in 2020 will be adjusted to match revenue collection Therefore, in accordance with Section 20 of the Public Financial Management Act, the quarterly expenditure ceilings of the approved budget will include up to a 20% downward adjustment beginning in the first quarter of 2022 in commitments across board for all covered entities benefiting from the 2022 budget subject to revenue performance. This means our fiscal consolidation agenda is not going to be only revenue-led, but also expenditure focused. In addition to the e-levy, we are committed to the implementation of other revenue measures, including the exemption bill, property taxes, internally generated funds, etc. I look forward to further engaging with you all in the coming days and sharing government's vision for creating a country where ingenuity is encouraged, where innovation is supported, where public service is valued, where responsibility and burden sharing is for all of us and prosperity will be shared. Accountability for the custodianship of public resources would also be prioritized. We have in the spirit of burden sharing and consultations, as I mentioned, gotten 25% of the fees of the commercial operators. This is in good faith, so let us keep 1.75% 
to build our country. The opportunity to build a resilient, more dynamic and prosperous society lies ahead of us. We must all seize the moment to build forward better in a wealthier society. We'll be right back with more news after this break. Welcome back. And to some international stories, Sudan's military chief, General Abdul Fattah, has appointed 15 ministers to a new government. The move comes almost three months after he seized power in a military coup which derailed a planned transition to election. Since the coup, there have been frequent large protests that have seen more than 70 protesters killed by security forces. Correspondents say the naming of a new government is unlikely to appease the protesters who want the military to quit the political scene entirely. Earlier, dozens of judges in Sudan called for a criminal investigation into the violent suppression of the protest, accusing military leaders of carrying out heinous violations against defenseless protesters. The United States has reiterated that it will not resume economic assistance to Sudan unless there is an end to violence and a civilian-led government is restored. Aid is trickling into Tonga from around the world as more governments deploy ships and flight to the country following Saturday's volcanic eruption. The underwater explosion triggered tsunami waves across the Pacific, killing at least three people in Tonga. It caused significant damage and crippled communications. The true extent of the damage is still unknown. A New Zealand vessel, which is expected to arrive on Friday, is the first major supply ship. The captain of the HMNZS, Otero, had earlier told news site Routers that the ship was carrying over 2,000 liters of water along with other supplies. The UN says clean water supplies are the top priority for the Pacific nation. Australia has deployed its largest ship, the HMAS Adelaide, which set off for Tonga on Friday. The vessel can carry helicopters, which can be deployed from the ship to bring supplies to Tonga's smaller outer islands. The vessel is due to arrive mid next week. The UK also announced on Friday it was also redeploying its HMS Spey to the Tongan response and had sent aid supplies ahead with the Australian ship. The international response was held up in the first days after the explosion as a blanket of volcanic ash over the island posed a significant barrier. Volunteers spent days manually clearing ash from the runway on Tungatapu main island to allow emergency aid planes to land. Mozambique has set up more teams to help in the search for six missing people after a vessel sunk in the river Zambezi earlier this week in the western province of Tete. The teams are drawn from the National Disaster Organization, the Maritime Administration, Marine Forces and local fishermen. It came after a search and rescue team was unable to locate the missing people for a couple of days because of the strong current in the big river. On Thursday, the search spread to other districts in Tete and the central Sofala province. An official appealed to fishermen and people living downstream to report to the authorities in case they find bodies in the river. And on to some sports stories, the Ghana Football Association's president, Kurt Okreku, says he accepts the blame for the Black Stars' poor performance at the 2021 African Cup of Nations. Ghana exited the competition on Tuesday, January 18th, following their 3-2 loss to Comoros. The group stage exit has led to a strong criticism from Ghanaians, while others have also called for the sacking of current coach Malivin Rojevic for failing to qualify the team to the next stage. But Okroku said he should be given the blame for the team's poor showing in Cameroon. The GFA president said, quote, Our plans did not happen at the tournament. This is unfortunate and this is not what Ghanaians deserve. Ghanaians deserve a very, very competitive team. A team that will bring glory to the country. A team that will bring happiness to our people. The 2022 edition of the Hockey African Cup of Nations kicked off at the Theodosia Oko Hockey Stadium in Accra with countries battling for supremacy in both male and female categories. The last seven men's African Cup of Nations have been won by South Africa as well as all the last six in the women's competition. Six countries including Ghana will be hoping to stop South Africa's seven-year dominance as the tournament progresses in Accra. Team Ghana's men started their bid to host and win with a draw against Uganda 
who showed a lot of grit to come back from a goal down in Pool B. Egypt, who are also in Pool B, grabbed a 4-2 win over Nigeria. Defending men's champion South Africa hammered Namibia 13-0 in a one-sided affair at the Theodosia Oko Hockey Stadium in Accra on Monday. In the women's category, Team Ghana was held to a 2-2 draw by Nigeria. Namibia's women started the tournament well with a 3-0 win over Uganda, while South Africa defeated Zimbabwe 3-0 on opening day. And on to some entertainment news. Award-winning Ghanaian gospel musician Celestine Donko is starting this year 2022 with the release of a seven-track EP. The EP title Testimony Therapy will be released on January 28, 2022. And finally, Adele has postponed her entire Las Vegas residency just 24 hours before the opening night. Half of her team had COVID and it's been impossible to finish the show, she added. The delivery delays had also played havoc with her plans. They would have been her first live concert in five years. Along with two dates in London Hyde Park this summer, they are the only shows she has announced to promote her blockbuster fourth album, 30. Speaking on Instagram, Adele said she had been awake for 30 hours trying to rescue the production, but had simply run out of time. Adele also apologized to fans who had already arrived to Las Vegas for the opening weekend. Quote, I'm sorry it's last minute. I'm so upset and I'm really embarrassed. And I'm so sorry to everyone that's traveled again. She added, we're going to reschedule all the dates. We're on it right now. And I'm going to finish my show. I want to get it to where it's supposed to be, but... We've been up against so much and it just ain't ready. Many fans have been supportive on social media, saying it was the right decision and wishing her and her team well. But some are facing losing hundreds of dollars from flight and hotel bookings. And that's it for Newsboard. Let's look again at our headlines. 17 people have been confirmed dead following a huge explosion at Bogoso Apiate in the western region. The Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, CLOCKSAC, has called off its strike. <music> Government has suspended expenditure in the 2022 budget by 20%. And Mozambique has set up more teams to help in the search for six missing people after a vessel sank in the river Zambezi. Thanks for watching. My name is Patricia Roxen Hammond. We came to you live from our studios at Kwabenya Point One. Good evening. <music>